Marvelous comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsun Hub on beastsofwar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hello everybody, welcome back to What's in the Box. Today myself and John are having a look at Doctor Who Exterminate from Warlord Games. Mm -hmm. So, if you're a Doctor Who fan, this is a game you want to check out because it lets you play out the adventures of the good Doctor and his companions on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Now, the box itself is covered with a Dalek going, EXTERMINATE! That was, that was, that was pretty terrible. Really? To be honest. You ruined my favourite bad guys out of the whole thing. Really? You like the Daleks? Yeah. Yeah. I think all the others look not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of the other ones. It's the Daleks because they are the faceless, stupidly dangerous monsters. Yeah, well, they are just raised and bred to be hateful and spiteful and mean and nasty and all those good things. I find it a little counterproductive that the Daleks are so smart, you know, individually so smart, mm. but still work together in an army. Yeah. It's like, well, surely one of you has figured out that there would be a better way to do something, but well, none there, of them there argue. There is the Dalek Prime. You know, every Dalek fleet is led by somebody. Mm, true. Not even Biscaro. True. All right, so in the box, we get a little piece of Warlord advertising. Mm -hmm. We get a weapons table, letting you know how everything works. Honestly, I expect it just to go zap and pew pew. You get two thereof, so that you and your mate can both have one. You get a Guide to the Time Vortex. Uh, which is just a nice little booklet with some extra bits in it. You then get uh, the Adventures book, so you can tell exactly what episode of the TV series you're going to play out. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure if they are based on them. And then you get your rules. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that these are all sort of separated, because you can just pick up the one that you need and not be intimidated by the booklet being a little thicker than it needs yeah, to be. Yeah. This feels very light to begin with. Right, stuff, John. Stuff, would you, would you like to start with the models? Uh, no, let's go with the card. With this stuff? Yes. Okay. So there you go. Let's see what we have here. So we have a couple of sheets of card with all of the tokens, measuring sticks, wound markers, target markers, some form of sun marker, time markers, and some other markers I don't know what they do. <laughs> it's just like, he's just going to admit that straight up too. Yeah. Uh, we then have cardboard TARDIS, some pipes, some terrain and stuff, marking of rooms, and we then have this, which I believe is going to be a paper game board. Yep. It is indeed. So this, yeah, it's quite big. Okay. Come here. Don't tear it. I'm not tearing it. If you open this. Okay, this takes up quite a bit of real estate. This is a 3x3? Three three? Uh, no. Yeah, 3x3. Three three. Are you sure? It does look square to me. Doesn't it? I could be wrong. It looks That's like it. a square to me. It is double-sided. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, pop it down. Yep, we'll throw it away. All right, I'll. Okay, I got it. Okay, I got it. I, I can do it. things. All right. All right. So that's the paper bits out the way. Mm -hmm. Now the miniatures. Now the miniatures. Uh, Cybermen or Daleks? Cybermen. Cybermen. So we have obviously. I think are these the new style Cybermen? I believe they are from the latest series. So on each sprue, you're going to get six of these. You've got the arms, the bases, and the main bodies. Mm -hmm. These look to be push fit, so I think when we come to build these, John, I will build them and I will actually attempt to push fit them. I'll okay. Not glue them. Okay. We then have the Daleks. I like these. Now is it Daleks or Daleks? Daleks because there's no R in the name. Okay. Dalek. Okay. Oh, I've been saying that wrong for years. <laughs> so they do look like they'll need a little bit of glue because you have the sides and the front of each and you get six per sprue. Mm-hmm. They're really nicely detailed. They are. I am, I'm really, really keen of those because they're very pretty. And I do like the fact that, you know, it's colored plastic. Mm. You know, this is hard plastic. It is colored. You clip this off the sprue. You put it together. Actually, they do look like they might push fit after all. I'd say they would. Yeah. So this looks like a game that's really designed just to pop it off the sprue and go. Yeah. You know, uh, for those out there who are maybe just board gamers, uh, the one thing you may want to get is a pair of clippers. Because I, mean, I remember whenever I first started modeling, I didn't have a pair of clippers. And what I was doing was I was literally just pushing the stuff off because I didn't even have a craft knife. Yeah. 
You know, so this is going to require at least one hobbyist tool to even get it together and if, on the table. If if you don't do the rest of our hobby, like yeah. wargaming and stuff, two tools for you. So your clippers, yes, and an emery board. Yes. So just the the cheap nail file emery boards you can get out of you, like your local chemists and stuff. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, perfect for just tidying up those little bits of the sprue that are left over. Also, if you're getting clippers, try and get sheer face clippers, mm -hmm. not like wire cutters, because they will cut right nice and tight to the miniature and leave you less to clean off. Yep. But these are nice. Yeah, so these we get very nice. 12 Daleks and 12 Cybermen. Mm -hmm. We then, of course, get some packs of cards. Now, I have no idea how to play this game. I have no idea what the stats are. So I'm not going to make any comment. I'm just going to run through and show you the, the pretty, pretty pictures. So you've got your card deck, which is about yay thick. So mm. there's a lot of cards to this. So you'll have your Cybermen with the, the different stats that you're going to need to learn to play. Uh, a couple of special things down the bottom here, which is maybe just keywords and stuff. You're getting battle cards, which have probably hits and misses, I'm guessing. Adventure cards, which have two arms. So I'm guessing this is maybe special events. Uh, another battle card with a hit. Adventure card with rapid response. What's this do? <laughs> uh, let's see. Discard this card to automatically remove all targets from your faction. And it's a dude sat on a chieftain. Uh, it's the doctor sat on a chieftain. Which doctor? Uh, the Peter Capaldi, uh, the latest one that's just about to change out this Christmas. Oh yeah, the one I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there's a question for you, John. Who was your favourite Doctor? It was actually the guy that did the least amount of episodes. Do you know when they rebooted the, the show? Yeah, the first time? Yeah, and it was What's-His-Face that did the first I know the guy you're on about. He was running around in the, the heavy leather jacket. Yes. With uh, Rose Tyler. Yes. Yes. I liked him. Really? Because... His first couple episodes was meeting the Daleks again, mm. and he demonstrated fear like I've seen no other Doctor mm. demonstrate. He was genuinely terrified and angry that mm. this thing was here and chained up, mm. and it was like, what the hell do we do with this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, for me, it had to be David Tennant. I think he played the role perfectly. I like David Tennant because he's always had that slightly... That quirky doctor. Mm. He he felt very quirky. He felt yeah, but he was like grounded but zany at the same time. Yeah. You know, I mean like the, the first episodes where he has just changed into the doctor and he's trying to figure out what kind of a person he is, mm -hmm. I find really interesting. But the doctor doctors do have a cycle. Yeah. They have a cycle. So here's what happens. The current doctor regenerates. Mm -hmm. And everybody goes, No, we'll miss you. The new doctor comes in. You can never be as good as him. Few episodes later, he's not so bad. A few episodes later, okay, I kind of like this doctor. A few episodes later, oh my god, he's the best doctor ever. And then the doctor's going to regenerate. No, we'll never have another doctor like you. <laughs> that is the cycle of Doctor Who. It is. Tell me I'm wrong. I think you, you've annoyed most of the fans now. Most of the Whovians? <laughs> is that what they're called? Yeah. Is that, is that what Doctor well, Who fans are? Whovians or One of the two. Whovian isn't really... Oh, is Whovian... It's Hubian or Hoovian, one of the two. I could ask Sam, but I don't know. Comments below. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and on the other deck of cards, what do we have? I believe this is like expansions to it because you have like a Doctor card as well. So ah, you actually have David Tennant. Ah. Yes. Uh, the, the rest of these are like more adventure cards mm. and combat and stuff like that. So, yeah. And other villains. Uh, now, I will say there's another reason to love David Tennant himself as an actor. Go on. Jessica Jones. Not seen. Oh, dude, it's, it's him playing a villain. Right. So he plays a character called Kilgrave, mm -hmm. who has the ability to make people do what he wants just by telling them. Okay. So he would say, you know, uh, you're going to let me drive around in your car all day. Yes, sir, here's the keys. You're going to give me your leather jacket. Yes, sir, here's your keys. Or, yes, sir, here's the, <laughs> the jacket. <laughs> Imagine or, if he said that every time. <laughs> or he can say, by the way, go kill yourself. And the person will go kill themselves. He has that much control over people. Right. And it is so, so creepy to see him play a villain. Because before that, I had only seen him as the good guy. You know, that paragon of, I am the doctor, you will not screw around with this. Yeah. Seeing him go, no, 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 I can actually do Psychopath really well. Mm. Uh, you're going to have to watch it. I swear to you. Right. So, I tell you what, we're going to go quickly away before I start spinning off on one. Uh, I will get these built and we will be right back. Okay, everybody, we are back. Uh, I have the Daleks and the Cybermen built. So what did you think of them? Uh, they will push fit together, mm -hmm. all of them, mm -hmm. but I decided to glue them. Right, and why was that? 
Uh, right, here's the thing. I prefer it to be glued together so that when I'm in mid-game, if I knock the thing, I'm not going to knock an arm off. It, 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 the stuff has a good tight fit to it, yeah. but I'd rather just be sure. That's just me. You're more, you're more approaching if you had the set pushed together and then you kept it in the box for a while and maybe it was moved around a few times and you opened the box and suddenly realized they've disassembled themselves. Yeah, you could say that as well. Is there, is there a big risk of that or is it uh, just... Not for the Daleks, no. but more for the Cybermen because it's, it's little pegs yeah. going into an arm and onto the base. Yeah. But I mean, once they're put together, they, they look great. Ta-da! Daleks. I, I, I always love the look of the Daleks. Like if, mm. if those had a proper paint job done on them... Ah, but do you like the new variant or the older variant? Or the World War Two variant. Well, that variant is the the newer one. Yes, um, this is the one where they can hover, and yes. stairs are no longer the greatest enemy. Yes, I I prefer these ones because right. I remember. In fact, there's actually four variants now. Because you there? have the original, yep. the newer, yep. the super new, yep. and the World War Two. I like this one because these were the ones I came back to when the show first relaunched mm. with the Doctor that didn't last very long. Yes, um, and it was the. The moment when the doors opened to the, the chamber and it was the blue, the neon blue eye. Yeah. And when the lights came up and it was there and it was this new, more refined design compared to what the 70s and the 80s Daleks yeah. looked like, which, to be fair, at the time looked utterly terrifying. But when you look at them now, you go, eh. Yeah. You can tell that, that bit's vacuum formed and stuff and when they move, it sort of wobbles a little bit. Yeah. These are the first Daleks I looked at and they looked solid and I yeah. was like, Mm, they well, look you, evil. You've seen the CGI of the, the, the actual chassis opening up? Yes. That, that just looks creepy. I, I like everything they did with the Daleks when the, the show relaunched, and those models are crying for a killer paint job, I think. <laughs> I opened my mouth, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, honestly, out of the set, I do prefer the Cybermen. Right. Why I is that? like them as a villain better. The idea that they are human 2.0, zero motion, and they're going to upgrade the world. Yeah. You know, the, the details on these, they are the new variant, which I actually like a lot better than the old one. Yeah. Uh, because the old one, it was... It's... Really, really p they, they suffered the, the old, low-budget yeah. BBC production at the time, yeah. you know. It was the, we have this show, mm. but... What do we do with it? What do we do with it? We don't have a lot of budget for it, so we have to make do with what we can afford. Yeah. And there, there was a class, it was either a documentary or a drama doc, Mm. on the creation of Doctor Who, the very first. Yes. And I think it was the docudrama I watched. Yes, it was. Uh, with all the writers coming together and trying to figure out what way the yeah, show was going to go. Who the first Doctor was and mm -hmm. him really getting into the role. Yeah. And whenever the new Doctor came in, him trying to explain, no, 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 that button does this. Yeah. No, I, it's a set. No, I, no, no, that button does this. That's I how the turn works. I have a friend that I met uh, mm. through Twitter. <laughs> through Twitter? Uh, really? through, through Twitter. You met a friend through Twitter? Yeah. This girl called Heather and she is a Who fan, like she is through and through Doctor Who, mm. but she, um, for her uh, dissertation at university or one of her big mm. projects, she focused on women's role in the creation of Doctor Who because ah. some of the main writers and workers yeah, were, yeah, yeah. were female and they, they bumped into a lot of problems with this. Yeah. But it was interesting um, to note that whenever Doctor Who was first being made, the BBC did not expect it to be the hit that it became. No, it became, it, well what it started off as was this sort of little side project this isn't what the BBC does this yeah. isn't you know this is off the cuff this is too weird no yeah. one will want this yeah. uh, and then it took off and yeah. you even seen in the in the docudrama of the the first doctor becoming so famous because this show had just blasted onto the BBC yeah, yeah, yeah. and everyone just fell in love with it yeah and he, he was an older actor who mm -hmm. he was he got so into it he wanted to keep working even though yeah. his, his health wasn't there yeah. you know he was starting to get to that age where he, you really need it just to slow down. And it, I think it's one of the few times where you see, like, TV at the time, mm. uh, from what I can recall of TV at the time, it was like your A-teams, mm. your, your big bombastic shows, you know, yeah. the, the almost American-style entertainment yes. that was coming into to Britain at the time. Yeah. Um, there was a sort of big resurgence in action and mm -hmm. positive sort of things, you know. moral Morality came into these sort of TV shows at the time where it was... We're fighting, but for the right cause, and yeah, this, this, that, and the, the other. The Doctor never really had to had to fight, had to pick up a weapon. Yeah, he was able to solve his conflicts without resorting to, uh, you know, an AK forty seven and M four. He yeah. just had a screwdriver. You know, he is the space janitor. Yeah, you know, <laughs> pretty this much. This is broke. I'm gonna fix it. But it shows you, and it's happened very rarely in TV, as far as I can tell, where a few people with a lot of passion and a little bit of budget 
created something that visually wasn't that spectacular, but story, structure, it tapped into acting, to what people really desired and wanted yeah. to be given more of. Yeah, it, it gave people almost the first Game of Thrones feel. Yes, okay, now that I will totally agree with. Yeah, you, you had the Doctor, the first Doctor came out and everyone went, oh my god, and yeah. then the Doctor went and then the new one came in mm. and everyone went, oh wow, and it, it, it had that yeah. Game of Thrones factor. That's something that we would look at today and go, it's essentially Game of Thrones in the 80s sort of thing. But here's what you miss out on. What Game of Thrones and shows like it these days are trying to do is that weekly dose of the show. Mm -hmm. It had that back then because you didn't have Netflix, you didn't have video on demand. It was, yeah. no, 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 no. Saturday at this time, I'm, 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 I'm sitting down to watch Doctor Who. I don't care what else happens. I'm sitting down to watch Doctor Who. I can't miss it. Yeah, it, it kind of take it, it, it kind of took um, the soap opera to the nerds. Mm -hmm. It took soap opera to sci-fi and it made something great out of that idea. But it was a time period where there were more and more people interested in the sci-fi genre. You know, fine, it was still underground at the time. Mm. I mean, like way back then, if you said you were a computer gamer or whatever, you know, you were probably working on a, a big ass tape deck computer. <laughs> Commodore 64s. Oh, God. I, I had one of those. I had one with, of those. With tapes. the six inch floppy and the tape deck. Ooh, were you fancy? Wasn't I fancy? Yeah. yeah. Damn right I was. And the first console I properly owned that was mine was an old Atari with Space Invaders on it. Oh man, I never um, had an and Atari. And I can remember the, the TV we had it on was one of the, the big wooden cabinet ones. We had a wooden cabinet one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we had a... Um, and it didn't have a remote, you had to get up and press the button to change channel. On the Commodore 64 and the yeah. tape deck, when you wanted to load a game, you had to let the tape practically run all its way through yeah. to load the information I into the thing to project. To it back to the future on it. Oh, that was fun. Awful. I had, the, I had um, on the six inch drive, mm. I had the original Ghostbusters game. Oh, dude. And it was magnificent. Yeah. Even the voices were terrible, like, yeah. Yeah, it's still, you knew what it was, but it was hilarious. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's one of those things. For the time period the Doctor Who came out, I think it was the exact right time for that show just to be a lightning strike. I mm -hmm. think you will never, ever see the like of it again. No. Like, yes, you'll have big shows, you know, uh, like Game of Thrones, like uh, Designated Survivor, things like that. But every show is of its time. And Doctor Who is one of those rare shows where it's, it's kind of timeless. Because mm. even with the stuff they're coming back to today, they're still telling those, those same heartwarming types of stories. You know, uh, it's that cycle I was talking about. I know I said it jokingly, but it is what happens. The new Doctor comes in, you get used to them, they become comfortable like an old sweater. Yep. And then whenever that sweater has had its day, you don't want to throw it out because it's still really nice and snuggly and comfy. The, the characters become friends. Mm. Like you... This is what you see in the most um, the most devout Doctor Who fans that I've talked to. Mm. You know, each Doctor is their own person, mm. and they know their favorite Doctor inside out. Yes, you know, they'll know enough about the others. Yes, but there will be one that will stand out to them, and they will go, "That's the paragon of the show for me." Yeah, you know, that one character. Yeah. But you ha you have the same with other shows like Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their favorite Star Trek. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, Voyager, obviously. Next Generation. Really? Yeah. Next oh. Generation. Picard. I, I, I'm sorry, that, that journey home always just captured me, but we digress. Anyway, <laughs> beautiful miniatures, definitely a game to check out if you're a Doctor Who fan. Yep. Uh, get your comments in below. Who was your favorite Doctor Who? Who was your favorite uh, captain from Star Trek? We're off topic on that one, but <laughs> I, I, he's got me curious now. We'll move on. We'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.